Dr. Sean is here. How are you doing? It is lecture night. We usually go at 6.30 p.m. every Monday night with some kind of a topic. And tonight's topic is a goodie. <laughs> it's on control. Giving up control. Giving up control. And um, I'm going to do it a little bit different tonight. I'm going to reframe the concept because we all know what control is and what it isn't, right? We, we know that. It's the doing it part. <laughs> it's the surrendering part that's so hard. And, um, and that's why I want to reframe tonight so we can actually start controlling what we control and giving up and surrendering what we can't control, right? Hi, Claire, I see you. Hi, Kaylee. It's nice to see you guys. I can see you guys are popping in. Okay, so before I get started, I always do a couple of announcements. One is, please join our Joy is a Habit Facebook group. I, everything I mention, I will put up in links. It's a great Facebook page. It's a great group, all focused on how do we provide more joy. And it's kind of like the frame of control tonight in some ways. Hi, Maria. I see you. Hi, Bernard. The reframe of control and reframing joy, because we reframe joy, meaning that you have access to joy, and on, on a dime, you can pivot and say, okay, I'm miserable, I'm upset about this, this is really upsetting me. What's one thing, one piece of joy that I can focus on in this moment just to get a reprieve from that pain or that upset or that trigger or whatever it is, right? Oh, I see you guys. Hi, Parveen. Hi, Kathy. Thank you. These are my brand new spanking new prescription glasses. Hey, Terry, I see you're in here. Wonderful. Um, I always give away prizes at the end of this lecture. Tonight's lecture is going to be pretty short, maybe 15, 20 minutes or so. I always give away a prize, and there's a couple of caveats. You have to be in the U.S. for us to ship it to you. And, um, and I'll sh at the end of the lecture, I'll tell you how you can win. We're going to win right during the live. And prizes tonight include some of our swag. We have Project Forgive swag. Of course, our exquisite kindness is contagious mask. We've got a black one. We've got a white one. Let me show it. And uh, masks are coming back. And I don't say that lightly. Um, a lot of masking is going on because COVID is really running rampant. And um, if you want to get one of these masks, wonderful. You can purchase it or you can actually win it at the end of the live. I'm also giving away one of our charms. We have charms, stainless steel charms. They say, that say forgiveness on them. You can use them for many things. Some folks have even sent me pictures that it, they put it on zipper pulls. So, you know, like when you have a zipper on your sweatshirt or whatever and put in the forgiveness. Actually, I have one right here. Here's what the charm looks like. Here, let me do, switch this around. We put them on our essential oils. That's not one of the prizes tonight. Tonight it's going to be, here's what the charm looks like. You can see it right there. Okay, my nail popped off, so I don't notice that. So you get these, it's a stainless steel forgiveness charm. We sell those two in our store. We also sell our oil, which is high grade, pure essential oil. It's got yang yang in it, it's got lavender in it. It's got two more things, but it's escaped me in the moment. We're getting rave reviews on our oil. So we do sell oils. We also sell our necklaces, our apology, you'll never receive necklaces that are also sterling silver, little doves, and uh, it has the three-step process of the Apology workshop, workshop on it. So please visit our store. Also, and you can do it right here on Facebook. We have a store right on Facebook. We also have one on our website at projectforgive.com. And um, if you've purchased in the past, if you wouldn't mind taking three minutes Go into our website and giving us a review on one of the products you purchased that would make such a difference for us. So thank you for that. Also, the Apology Workshop. We have the next one's coming up in September. It's September 29th. You can register right here on Facebook. It's off Facebook. It's actually on Zoom. The workshop is going to be an hour and a half. We're doing it about every other month right now. Soon we'll be doing it monthly as soon as we land a sponsor for that class. It does cost money. It's $6.99. And here's the thing though, we don't turn anyone away because of money. We have folks like Terry who provide scholarships. So we have scholarships available. All you have to do is email us, joy at projectforgive.com. I'll put all that information when, I'm, when the lecture's over and we will gift you a seat at our Zoom. And um, once we, the Zoom starts at seven o'clock on September 29th, it's non-refundable. So if you don't show, you don't get the money back. It just goes into our coffers for scholarships. And um, 
we close the doors at 10 minutes after. So the lecture, the workshop, it's not a lecture. You're actually engaging and doing work. And we always have a reframe that night. And the doors close at 7.10. So when the workshop stops, it starts at 7, if you come past 7.10, we, we aren't going to let you in because the intimacy that gets created, the safety that gets created to do such intimate, vulnerable work, that's the boundary that we're putting around it, okay? Um, so no one will be turned away. The only way you'll get turned away is if we reach our limit of capacity, right? Uh, one other announcement, if you're brand spanking new, be sure to tell us. We would love to welcome you. We are so welcoming here at Project Forgive. And also, if, when you do send stars, thank you so much for sending the stars. We use the stars for scholarships for our workshops, okay? All right, for those just joining us, the topic tonight is a reframe on control. Who loves to control? Who experiences a lot of control from people around you? <laughs> so how I thought I'd start with this tonight is I just get out of a boot camp. I do boot camps for a living and do trainings for a living. And we did our high pressure boot camp last Thursday and Friday. And during boot camp, we reframe words. Like we reframe the word fear so that okay we got this juxtaposition of love and fear when you're in fearful mode you feel panic upset anxiety you're off and it doesn't feel good and in boot camp we always reframe it that maybe as a possibility fear is good meaning all right in business okay because these are business conversations with the reframe so you take a risk in business you throw out an idea and maybe you don't do it perfectly maybe you screw it up and the process to to get masterful at it and to become really grounded in your new choices is to forgive yourself so that you can get better at it who's like try something new and you're not good at it most things you try you're not going to be good at it, and it's going to be a little bit scary uncomfortable frightening whatever and it takes practice to get good at something when i first started doing facebook lives do you think I was like, oh, yay, let me do a Facebook Live? No, I was freaking terrified to do it. I didn't know the tech, blah, blah, blah. I made so many mistakes along the way, and I had to forgive myself in that fear. And eventually became like, okay, no big deal. I can do this, no big deal. You know, several years later, here we are, right? Same thing with the conversation, <coughs> excuse me, about gossip. I'll come look and see what you guys are saying here in a minute. I have a PhD in communication, and my expertise is gossip. How do you make things go viral? Well, gossip as a con concept is a complete reframe. When you think of gossip, you think mean and nasty. That's not what the research shows. We actually used gossip theory to make Project Forgive go viral. We used gossip theory. And so that mean, nasty stuff is only about 5 to 7% of gossip. We're actually really good people. And good gossip is the best type of word of mouth advertising that exists on the planet. Some of you are here are even only here because someone told you to come see, check out our lectures, right? So that's a reframe on gossip. What about a reframe on trust for a second? Think about trust. We always think, oh, I'm not going to trust that person. They're a jerk. Blah, blah, blah. It's not about trusting other people. That's the second phase. The first phase or the most grounded part of trust in a reframe conversation, because our topic tonight is control, I'm reframing control. When you reframe trust, it's about trusting yourself that you'll know what to do for the next right step. It's not about trusting Joe Schmo out there. Now, it doesn't mean you're not gonna assess. Let's say Joe Schmo does something horrible and you're like, I don't like that. You've got many choices because you trust yourself. You can A, set some boundaries to alleviate that behavior. You can decide, eh, I'm not hanging with that person. That person's toxic. There's lots of choices when you trust yourself. So there's no boogeyman out there to trust. Do you trust your neighbor that says the plumber that he used is wonderful? So now you're going to use that plumber. You're following my line of logic. I know you are. And then the biggest reframe of all is forgiveness. We usually think forgive and forget. Pfft, that is just crap. Forgive and forget is a myth. Someone, you know, there's little things you can forgive, of course. You know, someone cuts you up on the freeway, I can forgive them pretty simple on a dime. I just say, oh, they have somewhere to get, or oh, someone's sick, or I make up all kinds of stuff to let me just process it and forgive them very efficiently and quickly. Big things like murder, being molested, 
breast cancer and you're angry at God or Allah or Buddha, whatever it is that how you frame your deity or if you frame a deity, we're non-religious. So I like, to, I like to frame it like that so everybody feels the freedom to come, right? So reframing forgiveness, it's a process. It's not an epiphany like you have an aha. Oh, all of a sudden I forgive them. No, forgiveness is work. <laughs> forgiveness is a process. And there's stages to it. And you go through nonlinear stages. So we reframe forgiveness all the time. So tonight, we're going to reframe control. Sound good? Let's see what you guys are saying. <laughs> I love the raspberry. I totally get it. Oh, people are welcome. Bonnie, I love that you welcome people all the time. You're so sweet. Welcome, Kim. You see if there's something you're saying, welcoming Gina. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Love it, love it. Oh, Nadine, that's such a beautiful thing to say. I am feeling a lot of freedom because I happen to be going on a mastermind for a week. So I, as of tomorrow, I'm on vacation and I'm going to be writing, working on the documentary that we got coming out and just taking a break, right? So let's see. Love the comments on the glasses. I know they're so cute, aren't they? Hey, Joe, what's shaking? Hi, Connie. Hey, Lauren, it's so nice to see you. Hello, Lauren. Yeah, people are, it's just, you guys are so lovely how you welcome people. You too, Terry. You're awesome. Okay, so tonight's topic is giving up control. Sometimes when you're sitting there too, you want to control what's coming out of my mouth and say, hurry up and get to the content. I get it. There's reasons why I do a lot of the things that I do. And sometimes people take a few minutes to get settled into their body before I get going. Plus, it gives me an opportunity to share some of the opportunities that we have with Project Forgive that would also support us too, right? Okay, so I have a list of things that we can't control, and there's a cabillion of them, right? And I'm going to read them off. I'll put them in the notes. Then there's a list of things we can control, right? I'll give you that list, and then I'll put them up, blah, blah, blah. And then we got the reframe, okay? So very simple tonight. Simple, simple, simple on the reframe. So things, you, here's my list. What you can't control, weather, traffic in the past. Darn it, <laughs> weather, traffic in the past. You can't control any of those things. Other things you can't control, other people's actions, other people's reactions, other people's thoughts, feelings, beliefs, other people's addiction and their recovery and other people's ability to forgive or their ability to give or receive an apology. You have zero capacity to control any of that. You can't control people's actions, reactions, thoughts, feelings, beliefs. I think we'll align with that. That's general knowledge, right? Thank you for the stars. I see you guys are showing up. Hi, Angie, I see ya. Okay, things you can control, okay? You can control the food you put in your frickin' mouth. <laughs> you can control that. You can control the amount of water you drink. You can control your personal hygiene if you choose to put on lipstick or put on a little bit of mascara. You choose your glasses. <laughs> you choose your mindset, your work ethic, your schedule. In many, in many instances, you have to give up control of your schedule. So I know there's sometimes it's a this and or, right? Control your honesty, you control your integrity, you control your ability to forgive your ability to give or receive an apology. You have the ability to control your actions, reactions, thoughts, feelings, and beliefs. Okay, then life happens. <laughs> I have some examples tonight, okay? So let's say you're mad at your partner, you're mad at your kid, your teenager, whatever. They won't clean up after themselves. That's a common one, okay? So to deal with it, you can, these are things you can control. You can explode in anger. <laughs> been there, done that, where you just hit the wall and you say, darn it, I would swear, just so you know. Can't you pick up after yourself? I'm not your mother, like you might say to your spouse, or you might say to your kid, I'm tired of picking up after you, blah, 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 blah. You guys know what I'm talking about. Or maybe, instead of screaming at them or getting really angry, you indulge in behavior that hurts you because you're so upset. So that might mean like shoveling Reese's peanut butter cups down your mouth or a half gallon of ice cream, been there, done that, okay? Or you run around taking care of everyone else and then when it comes to you getting a mammogram, that's last on the list, mm, right? 
Because sometimes when we can't, when we try to control things outside of our control, we put all our energy in controlling others' schedules, others' self-care, others' chiropractic appointments, others' love, love, others, others, others. And then when it comes to us taking care of ourselves, it's last on the list, right? It doesn't mean you do it all the time. It just means it shows up, right? So when you give up trying to control others, though, when you start really assessing what you can control and what you can't, it's really surrendering, surrendering. You actually find a greater ability to control the things attainable. Now, let me say more about what I mean. And I'm focused on really intimate relationships in this discussion, the people you really care about, the people you spend a lot of time with, especially during COVID, because I've been with my husband 24 seven, mostly 24 seven. It's one of the reasons I'm so excited about leaving tomorrow, because I can get a break from 24 seven with my husband, you with me, okay? And some of us are alone too, I get it. I just, I'm just telling you my circumstance. So here are some of the things, because I've been really playing with the conversation of control and just been really noticing what am I doing that I'm controlling that doesn't reap the rewards that I want, whatever those are, that doesn't give me joy. One of them is doing laundry at my daughter's. I visit my daughter quite a bit in uh, Florida. She's a, she's a very busy mom, busy doctor, and one of the things I do when I go to her house is I take over the kitchen and clean the kitchen and cook and blah, 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 okay? One of the things I always also did was I always did their laundry, which was massive, like massive. And after a while, that got old, okay? I'd go home from vacation, being with my daughter, go home exhausted because all I'm doing is cleaning the freaking house and doing their laundry, okay? So my last visit, which was about a month ago or so, I announced, maybe two months ago, I announced that I was no longer going to do the laundry. And they're like, okay, you know, because they never asked me to do it, right? I'm just doing it to be helpful. And I really looked at what was driving me to do their laundry. What was driving me was guilt. I know what it's like to be a very busy mom. I was a single mother for years. And I would have killed for that kind of help. You know, are you relating to this? I'll look at coming to the comments here in just a second and so but it was at the expense of myself so I couldn't do it anymore well the trickle down effect is I gave up doing my husband's laundry I haven't done my husband's laundry it's been two months hands down and now when he has his laundry in the dryer I'll just say hey your laundry's in the dryer will you move it I got a load coming and he goes off and does the laundry but that's not my chore anymore. I don't do that laundry anymore, which feels so good. Okay, that's just one simple example. Here's another example. So, and I love to talk about preventative medicine. I'm due for a colonoscopy. I'm 57, my last one was at 47, so I'm due for a preventative colonoscopy. So of course, <laughs> my doctor gives me a referral and I have to make sure it's in my insurance and I call and the the doctor they refer to me is not in my network, okay? Been there, done that, and had to fight one 10 years ago, and I'm not going through that again. I learned, fight to have the insurance company pay for a preventative measure. So I proceeded to call several doctors to see if they're in my network. They were in the online in my network, but I said, you know what, let me feel them out and see how the office feels, okay? Um, I'm pretty loving when I call for services or whatever, even when I'm talking to consumers energy or whatever, you know, I, it just feels good. It's a way to connect with people. The first three places I called felt terrible, like cold, aloof, never mind customer service, just no nothing. And now like, and I have empathy, don't get me wrong. I know our First frontline workers, those working in doctor's office, I know they're under a lot of stress. My bar is not that high, okay? <laughs> For basic kindness and basic customer service, it's not that high. Um, and the last call, the third call, the third call, the lady who answered the phone, she was, I could tell she was in a hurry trying to get me off the phone. And I had a lot of questions because I wanted to make sure the anesthesiologist was in my network. I mean, I am leaving nothing to chance with getting bills that are outside of my network, okay? That's just what's so. 
And I said, you know, I have one more question about the anesthesiologist. And her, you know what her response was? What? And I'm like, no. I have control. I literally thought this. I have control over where I go for a colonoscopy. And I have to have basic kindness. Not over kindness. Just basic, basic kindness. So... You know, I got my question answered. She was not nice at all. She was she was the B word, really. She really was. If I owned that business, I would have had a conversation with her or got her some training. The fourth call was the charm. This lady was exquisite. She was lovely. She answered all my questions. I mean, this is like a two-minute phone call, okay? And I'm like, this is where I'm going because I can control where I go for a colonoscopy. I have control over that. Why not be around kind people? Why not? I can have kind people in the doctor's office, okay? And when the call was ending, I told her that she was such a delight. She was such a delight that I have to go with her and, you know, I'm thrilled. And, and how people treat you in, a, in an office says a lot about the leadership, too. I do leadership training. That's what I do, okay? And however the leadership is at the top... They set the tone for how it's going to be in the office. So it felt so good to consciously, and the key here is consciously, not unconsciously, consciously choose a beautiful doctor's office to do my exciting colonoscopy. <laughs> okay? So I'm like, that is a perfect example. Now, I'm also playing with control with my husband, okay? Because I'm the most controlling with my husband. Can anybody? <laughs> my poor husband. <laughs> So we have like standard rules around community areas in our house, okay? All right, before I go to that, let me see if you guys are relating, okay? Let me see what you guys are saying. Yep, just looking. Thank you for the stars. I'm with you, Lynn. Yep, um, I'll look at that after the live and maybe that's something I can, if you wanna go ahead and copy and paste that into the messenger. I'll go ahead and take a look, okay? Yep, I'm with you, Abigail, on the dishes. <laughs> you guys are fun. I'm just looking to see what you guys are saying. Hi, Claudine. Yeah, Abigail, you're so right. And that's the key there about pressure. We put this pressure on ourselves. The reason I'm sharing this is because I know that people can relate. It's mostly unconscious. It's mostly unconscious, and Project Forgive is all about making the conscious, the unconscious conscious, making the unconscious conscious. And I feel like when I give my real-world examples, that it helps you listening. That's the reason why I share it, right? Okay, love the self-care. Yep, yep, I'm with you on the laundry fairy, Claudia. Freedom is a great word. That's so spot on. Perfect. Yep, I'm with you. Thank you for the stars, Melissa. Yep, I'm with you, Nadine. The surrender is the magic word, Maria. You are so spot on. That is the right word. Perfect. Okay, so I'm going back down, looking for comments as I finish out these last couple of stories. So here's the other example with my husband, and I was talking a lot about at the boot camp that I just did. And uh, so the common areas, the basic rule of thumb is we keep the common areas clean, meaning the kitchen, the foyer, the living room, um, the bathrooms, common areas we keep clean. And for whatever was going on, I go in the kitchen one of the mornings last week, and my husband's crap is all over. I'm just like, livid. I just want to go scream at him. And I was like, okay, just take a breath. You're a communication master. <laughs> and let's go talk about it like adults. And I'm like, wait a minute. How many times have you had this conversation? How many times have you shamed him, because that's what it feels like for him, about the common areas? Can you just let this go right now, right now, and breathe? It's just a couple of things. It's, not real, it's really not that deep in the scheme of things. And can I just do that? And I did, I did. That was a first for me in a long time. Here's another example of control. Okay. So I have a wedding ring. Okay, it's beautiful. A beautiful wedding ring. And it is an issue of pain in my marriage because my husband won't wear his wedding ring. Does anyone else have a partner that won't wear their wedding ring? And I said, you know what? 
it's time to unpack this. What's going on with you about this damn wedding ring? And he wears it sometimes. He says that it hurts his hands. It, he works with his hands a lot, you know, like chopping and stuff like that. And, um, and I always go to my romanticism around wedding ring that, oh, I can't wear a wedding ring. My husband doesn't wear his wedding ring. Okay, so here's the unpacking process for me about the wedding ring and what am I going to surrender to and let go of. So my first husband was alcoholic. I was married for five years. And this Terry is my husband. That's my husband I'm married to now. We've been married 25 years. My first husband did not wear a wedding ring. And there was a lot of other issues going on there, right, with all the alcoholism and everything. So that's there for me with my now husband for 25 years about the wedding ring. I'm like, okay, so that's there. I can accept that. And then the other thing is, Separate of Terry, my husband, I can control whether I put a wedding ring on or not. Do I actually enjoy wearing a wedding ring? And the answer is yes. Yes, I do. I love my wedding ring. It's so pretty. And, um, and even though I'm an older lady, I still get hit on from the older men. <laughs> it happens, right? And I don't particularly, you know, it's cute. But I'm, I'm pretty much at that stage in my life where it, it just is kind of bothersome. Um, I don't mean it in a negative way. And I notice when I wear my wedding ring, I get less flirting stuff with from other men who are not married or whatever. That's a delicate way to put it. And um, so I enjoy wedding, wearing my wedding ring. It makes me feel good. That piece about my husband not wearing his let me put that to the side for right now and let because I can't control that, right? I can't. So I said to my husband today, I said, you know what, honey? I'm putting my wedding ring on. I want to just cease conversations about it because it's an ongoing pain, an ongoing complaint from me about you not wearing yours. The only thing I really need to say is that I feel really sad that you don't wear a wedding ring. That's really the truth. I feel really sad that you don't wear one. I'm not saying this to guilt trip you. I'm not doing any of that. I just am going to choose to wear, wear my wedding ring because it feels good to me. And I have joy wearing it. And at the same time, I feel sad that you don't wear yours. Enough said. Do I know where this is going? I have no idea. I just know I want to try that on like I'm trying on my wedding ring. Okay? And that feels really, really good. Yeah, let's see what you guys... Yep, I'm with you, Abigail. I'm with you on that. Perfect. Aw, Nadine, that's so sweet. Yep. <laughs> I'm with you about the adult conversations are not always adulting by far. That is exquisite, Abigail. I love that. Yep, I love hearing that, Claudine, that your husband only wears it when he goes out. Yep, when you went out. Perfect. That makes a lot of sense to me. Wear it around his neck. That's a great idea, Melissa. <laughs> You know what, I'm going to still continue to um, give up control and see where that leads me. It, just because I made this decision today, and this is also applies to you, doesn't mean you're stuck with it for the rest of your life. You can change your mind. You can change your mind. And just in that context of playing with control, which feels so good to me to play with control, because I've always had control is such a bad thing. Controlling women, control, control, control. My mother was so controlling, right? And, um, of course, I have my own stuff that I'm always unpacking, right? Okay, cool. So reframe. Questions to ask yourself, and I'll put them in here. With that said, what are you going to surrender to not controlling? And then at the same time, what can you commit to focus on controlling that is well within your power? Yeah, and the reason I mentioned water, because I can control how much water I drink, and I'm literally drinking eight um, eight ounces a day. I've decided that's good for my health. I actually keep track. I can control the water going in my mouth. I can control the food going in my mouth. And the interesting byproduct of this right now with what can I control, what can I control, I'm having much more facility around my health and what I'm controlling in my mouth than I've ever had. Because when I get upset and I can't control something, I'll shovel something down my throat. It's like a way to deal with the stress of not controlling blah, 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 or blah, blah, blah. So it's kind of neat to see this starting to shift, right? 
And um, so my request of you tonight is to try on some of the things, looking at what you can control, what you can't control, and start shifting that and playing with it a bit and uh, see what comes of it, okay? And keep me posted of what comes up, okay? All right, with that said, next week, I'm gonna give away a prize here in just a second. Next week, the topic is dumping perfectionism, especially around the conversation of forgiveness. We're gonna look at reframe, probably, perfectionism and raise something to make something more conscious that's been unconscious if you deal with perfectionism yourself or perfectionism with people that you love. Okay, so perfectionism, we're taking that on next week. Now, someone's about to win a prize. Here's the prizes tonight. Kindness is contagious mass. We've got white one. We've got a black one. We've also got a forgiveness charm, a sterling silver forgiveness charm. I'll give you a little care sheet that tells you how to take care of your sterling silver. And the boundary of it is you must be in the U.S. to win. So sorry about all those in Canada and other convert in other countries. I apologize. We can um, financially manage shipping here in the U.S. So that's the reason why we do it. And um, so here's how you win. I'm going to give you something to put in the comments. And uh, let's, put <laughs> let's put in the word control. And how about the sixth person that I count in my feed that wrote in the word control is going to win that tonight. Okay, I see you guys are making some, saying some great comments about your daughters and stuff. That's wonderful. I know it's not fair, Claudine. I hate that life isn't fair sometimes. I got it. Makes sense. Okay, so, and I don't mean that facetiously whatsoever. Control number one was Nadine. Control number two is Dolores. Control number three is Nancy. Um, look, number six is our winner. Control number four is Liani. Control number five is Barbara. I'm waiting for control number six. Control number six is Melissa Monroe. It's you, baby. Melissa Monroe is our winner tonight. Melissa, all you got to do is just message us here on Facebook. Hailey runs the office with me. And just so you know, we're the only ones that see your information. So I need your address here in the U.S. as well as your email. Because we put your email when we ship it so you can keep track of the tracking of the package. Okay? You guys, thank you so much for playing. Next week is... What is it? I love that you guys are putting up a give up control. Is dumping perfectionism. Okay? I love that you guys played. All right, that's it. Your goose is cooked. I'm going to put up the notes here as I say goodnight, and um, I will see you guys next week, okay? All right, bye-bye. Take care.